So once we're on the iPad, we can touch the iMovie icon and it will launch iMovie and we'll see this marquee with these representations of our projects um, as posters. What we want to do to start is actually click on the plus button to create a brand new project. We get this interface with a library of clips that have been inherited from the photo application and we can just use our finger to scroll through the different library of items. We tap on one to select it and then drag with our fingers the handles left and right to kind of narrow the selection. We can see a marker of time, so 5 seconds, 4.9 seconds, and then that little arrow, we tap it and it lands into the timeline. We can use our finger to scroll through the different other items and make selections just similar as before. The cursor automatically goes to the end, or the playhead rather, goes to the end, and so we know that whatever we select next is going to land in sequence. We don't have to be terribly precise with what we're selecting because we do have the option of adjusting that material just by tapping on it to select it and then dragging the corresponding handle left or right depending on which side of the clip we want to trim. I just swipe to the beginning and hit play and it'll kind of play through with these default dissolve transitions put in place and kind of get a sense of how the sequence is shaping up and the students who are editing it can look at it and see if they want to reorder something or add something to it which we'll do now. This is kind of the key moment here with our protagonist added in. And now we're jumping directly inside to a different type of shot. Drag that in. All of them have cross dissolves. We're about close to 20 seconds now worth of time. And then this would be the closing shot. Just use my finger to scroll all the way back to the beginning and go into this music tab. There are a variety of different sound effects and I'll choose this radio tune to kind of give life to that uh, old amplifier that I found in Van Heys Hall. We can add only a fairly limited number of title styles so it wouldn't be feasible to do like detailed captioning here but we have the title and it's fairly kind of nicely stylized there. One of the main things that would be akin to the performative aspect of doing a skit in class is the narration that students could record and you can actually record multiple tracks of audio so it doesn't have to be as it is here just one person recording but you kind of set where you want that narration to begin. The green bar represents the strength of volume or how loud the speaker is speaking into the microphone. And you get that nice sort of writing to the image in order to pace like how fast you're kind of telling the story. You'll find that in the time it took us to do this, which was, you know, roughly four minutes, you know, you can put together something that's useful. If you have more time to polish it up, that's a bonus. The way that I've handled the music, which you heard in the more polished example, is I simply held the voiceover recording tool up to a YouTube clip and then gleaned the citation information or the credits from the YouTube video and just recorded it in and adjusted the volume. So it's quite a robust set of editing tools and 
as I mentioned in the introduction, it really has the power to shape instructional design in an important way.